Hey guys, so today I thought I would do a full face of Chanel uh, for no reason other than my friend that actually works at Chanel sent me a little goodie bag of some things that he noticed I did not have in my collection and that would include two of the liquid eyeshadows that came out with the Desert Dream or just desert collection. Um, I had purchased the other three and I didn't have these two. So he sent those two over for me. We can play with those. And he also sent over, I can't believe this, like so many of the new lip liners. And these are like the testers. So they have like the clear cap on there. So what I think I can do is like swatch all of these for you because if you guys don't know, Chanel kind of reinvented their lip liners and I think they're actually an improvement. Whenever I hear a brand reinvent one of their like staples in their lines, I automatically think it's gonna be worse. I'm, I automatically think like, why? Why would you fix something that's not broken? But I do actually think these are an improvement. So I'm eating my words now, but I purchased a couple at Nordstrom. And again, he noticed that I did not have a lot of them, almost all of them. So when I received this package, I was like, I just love Chanel. So let's go ahead and just do a full face of Chanel. All right, so I'm gonna start with the Chanel Sublimage Foundation. I have it in the shade 20 Beige, and I haven't used this in a while, and this is, such a lovely foundation. It's one of those foundations that I know I love, but when I'm kind of reaching into my drawer, I overlook it all the time. And then when I use it, I'm like, oh, why don't I use this more often? It's one of those. So this product came with like a little spatula, which I have misplaced. So I just, I just dip my finger in there. I know that's gross, but it just, you know, it has to be easy. So anyway, just stick my finger in there, dab a little onto the face. This is quite fragranced if you're not into fragrance. You're definitely not gonna like this foundation. And I'm using my BK Beauty 101 brush. I've just been going hard with this brush when it comes to foundation. It's just been like my buddy. I just have it sitting right here on my vanity. I just continuously reach for it. I'll spot clean it and just keep going with it. Oh, you know what I just realized? I love the Chanel concealer, but I went through it and never replaced it because I have so many other concealers. So I don't think I have a Chanel concealer actually. So I guess this is an almost a full face of Chanel. All right, there is the sublimage applied. That was a very light layer. This is definitely a buildable foundation. I'm gonna leave it as is. I've really been loving, I generally do, but lately I've really been loving like very natural kind of makeup. So I'm just gonna leave it right there. Since I don't have any Chanel concealer, I'm just gonna use my Dior Forever Skin Correct. Uh, this is the one that I've just been using pretty much nonstop lately. This is in the shade 2N. And I just love the texture. I love how creamy it is. I love that the coverage is there. It's pretty, it's pretty medium to full, but it doesn't look thick or heavy, it's just, oh, I just love it. It's really, really flawless. Very, very skin-like. And then as for powder, I almost just automatically reached for my natural loose setting powder, uh, but I kind of forgot that I had this press powder. This is the Le Beige Healthy Glow Sheer Powder, and I have it in the shade number 10. This is the one that comes with the limited edition writing on the cover. I can't remember for the life of me when this came out, La Beige, I guess last summer, like all the seasons are really starting to like run into each other for me. Anyway, I'm gonna use my La Mer powder brush. And if I remember correctly, this powder was kind of hard pressed. Oh yeah. And I remember I had to kind of go in with the brush. Yeah, there, finally pick some up. I feel like I need a natural haired brush for this. I'm gonna try my Chikohoto G8 that I got while I was in Japan. And this is squirrel hair, which is very soft, but yeah, I think this is actually doing a better job kind of picking up the powder. There, just a light dusting of the powder. I feel like it mattified a little bit, but it doesn't leave my skin looking too dry. If I remember correctly though, if I go in a little bit too heavy with this powder, it does start to look a little bit dry, especially underneath my eyes. And that's why I like that it's kind of like hard pressed. Maybe it's baked actually, 
I can't tell, but it is like a little bit difficult to pick up product out of this uh, pan. And that was kind of a blessing in disguise because yeah, when I kind of kept going back in and back in and reapplying and reapplying, my skin started to look a little bit dry. So I do like to go a little bit lighter with this particular powder. And for bronzer, I haven't used this in a while, but this was one of my favorites like last fall, but this is the bronzer and highlighter duo and I have it in the shade medium. I've made plenty of fun of the light one. <laughs> that has shown up in some of my uh, worst products of 2019. I really beat that poor dead horse. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and use my uh, Refer P22 brush. Ooh. This brush picks up a lot of products. Let me apply some over here and then blend this in. All right, I have <laughs> plenty of bronzer on my cheeks. Let me blend that out a little. Eek. All right, and next up, I wanna use a blush that I picked up and I hauled for you guys. I think I got this, yes, I got this when Mona was here. So we did a live stream, I talked about it then. I may have hauled it in another video, but it is the In Love blush. This guy right here, it's peach. It has this beautiful, beautiful like golden shift in there. There's like a few little micro glitters. So beautiful, but I don't think I've actually used it on camera with you guys, so we need to do that. So I've got my refer number four brush. I'm just gonna go in, pick up a little bit. This is a very bright blush. This is definitely one of those blushes if you wanna forego highlighter, you could probably, not. of course, you could forego highlighter, whatever you want, but I feel like this gives enough glow in this area that you really don't need it. Just gonna take that La Mer brush and just Kind of buff everything out. I feel like I am gonna take my own advice and forego highlighter and just kind of leave it with the blush because it just has such a pretty golden sheen right there from the blush. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna leave that. I think that looks really pretty. I love, love, love this In Love blush. I love all of the Chanel blushes. What am I even saying? All right, eyebrows. I don't have any Chanel eyebrow products. They are not my favorite. I think I've tried a couple of things and they were just very, very mediocre or I didn't like them at all. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put on my Tom Ford Fiber Brow Gel. What's new? And I'll be back to play with some of these liquid eyeshadows. All right, all done. So I've got these two liquid eyeshadows from Chanel that my friend over at Chanel sent over to me. These are, let's see, this is the shade 26 Rose Quartz. And then this is number 24, Rising Sun. So I pretty much got like the three cooler toned uh, liquid eyeshadows out of this collection. I don't know why. I don't know why the warmer toned ones didn't speak to me or maybe I was just in a cool toned mood, but this one's definitely warm toned. I think I'm gonna try this. This actually may look really pretty with that uh, In Love um, blush that I have on. So these have like a little doe foot applicator. And what I like to do is like brush some onto my lids and then let it set a little bit and then kind of like work it out with a brush. All right, I'm gonna swipe some on. I've also noticed with the other colors that I got that I generally need to use like a couple layers to get like a nice kind of even um, application of this. So I'm just gonna let that set because it is a little bit on the thinner side. So I just wanna get it a little bit tackier and then I'm gonna go in with my Refer uh, One brush and just kind of blend this out a little bit. It does um, set down, so you do want to go in with the brush. You know, you don't wanna to wait too long. There's like sort of a sweet spot in there. And I definitely like working like one eye at a time. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more All right, there is Desert, no, Rising Sun number 24 applied to my lids. I think I'm okay with just this one color. I wonder, actually, uh, if I should use the In Love blush since I've been using blushes eyeshadow a lot the past couple of weeks. Uh, I think this would actually be really pretty to kind of like help blend it out even more. So let's try that. Let's give it a whirl. I'm gonna use my Esam G34 brush. It's like a really big fluffy blending brush. Just gonna drag this over the top section. 
Oh, pretty. I think that's working actually really nicely. Wow, I think that actually worked out really, really nicely. I think the blush blended out that top edge of the uh, Rising Sun liquid shadow really beautifully. Let me find some Chanel eyeliner. All right, I pulled out uh, color number 951. It's Khaki Intense. I know this was limited edition, so I don't know if I'll be able to link to it down below in my description box, but it is color 951, Khaki Intense. I hope it's still available. It's such a nice color. It's just this like really soft kind of like khaki color. It's much deeper. There's like a little olive in there. It's just, it's a really, really pretty color. All right, eyeliner is done. I'm gonna curl my, uh, my, I'm gonna curl my mascara. Wow. I'm gonna apply the Chanel La Volume Waterproof Mascara. I have it in the color 20, which is like a deep brown. I don't know if there's a color name to this. 20, it's color 20. <laughs> All right, and now on to lips. So like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I got a whole bunch of the new lip liners sent to me. So let me go ahead and open all of these and we'll get to swatching all of them. All right, so I unpackaged all of them and then I pulled out the two that I have. So I have, well, one of them is clear, which we'll talk about in just a second. So I have one, two, Six, I have seven colors or eight, including the clear. So I'm just gonna go in number order. Otherwise I'm gonna completely lose track of where I am. So first we have a uh, shade 152. This is clear. So this is just to kind of help in case you like get feathering or like, you know, like if you wear lip gloss or a thin formula lipstick and it kind of like starts to bleed or whatever, this helps kind of keep everything in. So it has, a, it actually has like a little bit of a white cast there. <laughs> I don't think you'll be able to see it. But anyway, that is number 152. Number 158 is Rose Naturel. And that's this shade right here. Then we have Nude Brun. This is the one that I've been using a lot. I'll say that. So there is Nude Brun. It's a little bit cooler than the Rose. And then we have color 164, Pivois. P oh boy. It's this color, 164, and this is even more pink. So now that I've laid this down, the rose actually looks a little peachier. This looks the coolest, and then this looks like it has the most rosy pink in it. All right, and then we get into the reds that I have. So I'm gonna start with number 178. This is Rouge Cerise. Why am I drawing these so short? There's Rouge Cerise. Next, we have 184 Rouge Intense. It's a little bit deeper there. And then next we have Brun Carmen. This is the other one that I purchased. This is very close to, what's the one that I just did? The Rouge Intense. The Rouge Intense actually is a little bit more orange. This Brun Carmen is, just has like a little bit more red in there. And then last but not least, I have 192 Prune Noir. And that's a nice deep blackberry color. So my friend that sent these over to me knows me so well because I usually go for nudes and red lipsticks. I know there are some lip liners in the Chanel line that have like, you know, bright pinks and bright oranges. And he knows that I just, I never really wear those colors. So this is absolutely perfect for me. All right, so I pulled out my uh, Rouge Coco lipstick in the color number 406, Antoinette. And it is this shade which I just love. It just has kind of like a burnt kind of look to it, a burnt tone to it. And I thought that would look kind of nice with what was going on. So I actually don't know if there's like a really, really good lip liner for this. I think maybe I'll do the rose. Hmm. Maybe I'll lightly apply the Rouge Intense. This is the one that I think looked like it had a little bit of orange in there. So I'm just gonna line my lips with this. And I love these new lip liners because they are really, really soft when they go on, but they set down really nicely. And these like store samples that my friend sent me do not have the brush on the other side. So, so these lip liners do come with a brush on one end. And I'm just gonna use one to just kind of soften up this line. All right, hopefully that is a good match for this Antoinette color. Clean that up a little bit, and then I'm gonna take out this Rouge Intense again, and then I like to kind of clean up my bottom lip line here. 
All right, and there is my, well, basically a full face of Chanel. I need to go out and get that concealer from Chanel because I do, I do love it and I do miss it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Everything will be linked down below in my description box. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video.